So if I so there was the date range, right? Uh, we said that let's let's have a requirement. What is the requirement? Let's let's have a requirement like I will only I will only allow a range between ten to twenty. Anything below ten and anything uh, above ten, I will not allow them to enter in a field, right? So what would what would be the logic which you need to work on? Yeah. So first. You have to identify what is the blocker. What condition should I need to block for writing a validation rule? What is allowed is not not something which you will write in a validation. What is not allowed, that is you have to block. So there is one logic is that you can write this in two ways. One. So let's see. Let's see. This logic that 10, 10 to 20 is a condition, right? What how many conditions are there first? So Stika, how many conditions are there in this requirement? Two, Two conditions. So one is condition one, and this is condition two, right? right yes. so what is the condition condition is i can write a blocker two ways one i can write the condition of blocking directly or i can reverse the condition of allowed and write my validation rule that is two ways of writing it that means one is the actual creating a condition a new condition which these two conditions that I can block. The other way is I have to make sure. I will insert another another thing. I have to make sure that the allowed condition can be reversed. So I will come to the second category later. Let's first identify how am, am I blocking this. So anything less. What is the a, a user input? So user input is x okay so let's see x is a user input so i have a x and x is less than 10 i have to block x is greater than 20 i have to block right who are with me can you understand yes sir. so these condition one is less than 10 i have to block condition two is greater than 20 i have to block right now I have two conditions. I can write two validation rule, one to block this one, one to block this one. It will work. For the same field, I can write two validation, one with this condition, one with this condition. Easy, easy access. But I don't want to write two validation rule for the same field. I want to combine these two conditions, right? That is my so one validation rule will block both the conditions. If I want to do that, then I have to join these con two conditions. And there are only two ways of joining a condition. Or, or and. Okay. So I don't know what should I use here. So let's see. If I do an or. User input. What is the or condition? And what is an or and condition? If I use an or condition. That means if condition one or condition two, so when I am creating a third a joining condition, I am basically doing what? I am creating another condition. Condition three is basically a combination, right? Combination of what? Combination of condition one and condition two. And condition one and condition two can, can be two things, so or, or and, right? So let's first discuss or. Making sense now? Yes, sir. So condition one, condition two, in or situation, what will happen? If condition one is true, or condition and and or condition two is true, then the condition three is true. That means what? 
if this is true this is true then condition 3 is true if this is true this is false then also this is true if this is false this is true then also it is true if both are false then it is false validation rule condition 3 the what is the total condition of that validation rule has to be true in order for that validation rule to work clear if the condition of the validation rule that means the third condition which is the combined condition if that is false then the validation will not fire so or means false only when both are false otherwise true right and what is and just the reverse true only when both are true otherwise always false see this condition if i have this again matrix then this will become true because both are true and everything else will be false that means the validation rule will not fire for these things right so now let's check user input is x so if i now if value if, uh, now if i what should i choose the uh, or should i choose or and I, I should choose let's discuss this you always create a excel sheet like this it will be easier for you to understand so let's now take a value what is the value let's take eight I will take a gap. Eight. What is the first condition? True or false? Uh, so, uh, what is that? Uh, so, Stika, tell me. What is the value of the condition one? True. True. What is the value of the second condition? false so what what is the total value of the of, of if i join these two conditions with an or what is the total value of the condition What happened? Is on Clearly written here, right? It's true. Sustika, what about you? Omit. It's true, sir. True. Mm -hmm. Why? This is exactly this condition, right? So why so much you are worried here? So the validation rule will fire or not? It will fire. No, sir, it will not fire. It will fire because it is now true. Only when there is a true, the validation will fire. That means it will block it. If it is blocking it, then you cannot enter it. And that is what I need. I don't want values to enter less than 10 and greater than 20. So my validation rule has worked. Now let us try with uh, 22. What will happen? 
Malaysian will not fight. False. Well, so again, false. False. What is the second one? False. True or false? Yeah. False. True. True. Why false? Okay. Yes. Why are you saying this is false? Forbidden true. A user input is greater ah, than 22, 20, true. right? So it is true. Mm -hmm. So it becomes true. Yes. Right? And then the, <coughs> what, the blocker will fire or not? Validation will fire or not? It will fire. It will fire? It will block. So it will block. Yeah. Right? Block. Yes. Now I will enter a value of 12. What is happening? It is not fired, sir. False. False. So no mm. false. Okay. Oh, no, why? Then I will. False, sir. False. First is false. False. Second is what? False. So what is the total value? False. Both false yes. means false. So blocker no. will fire or not? No. So 12 will be allowed and this will be saved in database. And that is exactly my requirement. My requirement was I need all values to be saved. So Definitely OR is working if I give give this. So it is allowing 12, blocking 8, blocking 22. Three values is enough to test. Now let us test this three values. If I put a AND condition in this, tell me what will happen. So, so this is this is all true, same. No difference, right? So what, what is the value of the first condition? False. False. What is the <coughs> value of the second condition? False. False. What is the value of the third True. condition? True. False. 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 True only when both are true. Yes. Right? So the blocker will fire ever uh, on the three condition? No. There is no blocker firing, right? The blocker did not fire at in any of the conditions. That is why you cannot use AND. Clear? Can I write this same requirement in any other way? Now let us see this requirement in some other way. I am deliberately reading this so that you do not, you cannot refer this. So I am now changing these conditions. I am trying to write the same logic in a different way. This time, customer has said, allow values from 10 to 20. No difference. If some customer comes and tells you, block anything below 10, block anything above 10. And he says, allow values from only 10 to 20. Both are the same thing, right? Yes, no sir. difference. So first, you have to understand what is the requirement. Requirement, sometimes requirement will come as blockers directly. Sometimes the requirement will come as allowed. If allowed is there and you are writing a validation rule, then you have to first understand what is the condition I have to block. Sometimes it is easy to write blockers by using the conditions of the allowed. How can you, we can use the same uh, requirement that I want to block less than 10, I want to block greater than 20. This same condition I want to write in a different way. I want to write it with some allowed uh, values. So if I say less than 10, greater than 10, I reverse it and less than 20. These are the two allowed values, right? Condition 1 and condition 2. Right? Condition 1 and condition 
two are two allowed values. Now, what will happen uh, if I put a user input of eight? What happens on this condition? So, sticker, this is true or false? False, sir. What is this? Uh, this is less than 20 or greater than 20? That's a true. You're taking so much time to even understand the, the evaluate the logic. So 22 is greater than 10 or not? Yeah, it's true, sir. It is true. What is our what is this? That is false. False. 12 is greater than 10. Yeah. True. This is what is true. Will be less than is true. So let's see the whole condition. What happens? What will happen here? Condition will fire. No, what is true or false? Total condition three is uh, true or false. That is huh? true. 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 What about the second one? That is also true. What about the third one? One. True. True. So True. the validation rule will fire in all the three situations. Yes. It should not happen, right? We should only fire in eight and twelve. Yes. So this is a wrong problem. This is not behaving correctly. Mm. Right? Yes. We'll come to that later. How mm. would, can we correct this? So now let's let's uh, let's talk about this. What is this? True or false? Same thing, right? Yes. No difference. What happens here? False. 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 True. So the blocker is firing in this condition, right? Yes. Sir. Actually, the blocker should fire. Blocker should fire. Should fire. Blocker should fire here. Yes. No, sorry. The blocker should fire in this and this situation, right? Eight should not be allowed, and twelve uh, and twenty-two should not be allowed. Be allowed. So he, I am sorry. This is wrong. This wrong. Is wrong. I uh, apologies. So this is wrong, right? Yes. Twenty-two should be allowed, but it is blocking it. So this is wrong. And here, what is happening? It's doing a correct logic. Twelve is blocking it, but that is not the requirement. Twelve should be allowed. Yes. 8 and 22 should be blocked. Should be right? blocked. Yes. Right? So if I reverse this, then my requirement is solved. Yes, sir. It will be solved. Right? So let's let's reverse this. I will put a not now on top of this. So what will happen? The true will become false. False will false. become true. True. False. 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 True. 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 False. Now this is behaving correctly. Eight is blocked. Twenty-two is blocked. Twelve is allowed. Yes. So, same requirement. I can write in my validation rule. I can write condition three as what? Not. 
x x will be filled with your field value yes x plus in uh, get up then 10 10 and uh, x less than 20, 20 and there is a not outside yes problem solved the same requirement can be re written in the previous example i i wrote it as x less than 10 10 or, or it was behaving correctly with an or or yes. x x rather than 20. so this will also block anything less than 10 greater than 20 yes. and this will block also anything less than 10 greater than 20 because this is reversing it not is reversing the allowed values huh. is it now a little clear omit and sustika now, when we are talking about range 10 to 20, 30 to 40, uh, 50 to 60, in that case, you have six conditions. Condition one, condition two. Similarly, you have another condition two, uh, condition three, condition four. You will create another condition, condition five out of it. Then you have another condition, condition. Uh, six condition seven and then you have created condition eight with another condition right combining these two conditions then you have to combine condition three condition five and uh, sorry condition six and condition nine okay so it's a complicated step-by-step -step journey so start with this simple solution when you are uh, you are understanding the whole thing then you go and combine ranges ranges means now you are using this whole condition and then you have to create another uh, another sheet like this wherein you will you will create this as condition 3 condition 6 and you will create and then you will combine these two overall but your user input should always be like this and you can check what is happening okay sure that is how we need to work so here you can also you can put it side by side like this uh, if you have like something like this condition 4 condition 5 and this is another range right condition condition allowed values right 30 40 i am doing in the reverse way i think first try with the easier way is the blocker values directly is easier for you to understand to do that first and then try to do the same thing with reverse conditions this is a practice you should do on your own anything this is is uh, these two condition again you are having an or condition put this like this just try with first two conditions right two two ranges 10 to 20 30 to 40 and then you can just repeat this for another range no problem at all right and you have to test it using these inputs And then in the last, that is most important, is that when you are done with this condition, thing, then you have to combine this, right? In that case, you have to you have this condition six. Then you have a or or and on condition three. And so here now we put condition three and condition six, and you create a condition seven. So this will combine condition three and six. That means what is the output of first two condition is in condition three, output of four and five is in condition six. Now we are combining condition three and six. 
into combination 7. So what would be, how is the condition 7 look like? Condition 7 will look like something like this. Bracket. It will have, I will use a third bracket so that you understand. First bracket, condition, condition 1 or condition 2, bracket close or condition Four or condition five. So go step by step, and there is so there are two conditions, right? This bracket, you have to, why is the bracket important? Because this this bracket makes it a total combined condition. This is basically condition three. Right? Condition 3 is this. And this is condition 6. So you need these brackets so that this one becomes one condition. And then this one becomes another condition. Now we are combining this whole condition. So then there is a range between this three. So when you are able to do this range, you are you should be able to now understand how if uh, complex or else conditions do work because that is very important to understand one one how to basically come out with values. So step go step by step. There is nothing to be ashamed of. It's not very easy thing to understand. You need a lot of practice in order to understand this. And when you do a lot of practice, after that, you will not need this Excel sheet at all. You can do the math on your own. Whenever you see this bracket, you can easily know. Uh, so this is totally true. If either of them is true, then this is total true. Either of them is true, total true. So now if both are true, then total true. So basically, I, in, uh, when you see a condition like this, you understand that if any of these four conditions is true, then the whole condition is true. Then I will block, right? So when you yes. are getting a blocker condition, usually directly put the blocker conditions and put a or. Generally, that will work. Okay. Usually, it, it should work. If if you have already come up with the blocker conditions, then most of the time the or condition will work. So if there are ranges, three ranges, that means six conditions, then you, have, you can put an OR between all these ranges, all these conditions, it, it should work. Okay. When you have allowed values given at that time, what you can do is that you can derive the blocker conditions and then put an OR again. Or as I told when allowed values are given put an end with all those condition and then outside put a not usually it will work so this is use or or blocking conditions use a not and and or Inside and inside and for allowed conditions. Right? Practice this once again. Usually this should work all the time. When how are you writing a validation rule? First understand. Uh, do I have a blocking conditions? All the conditions I have is blocking conditions. If it is true. Then make an OR between all the conditions and test. If it is working, you are done. If you have, if you if you see the conditions you have at hand are all allowed conditions, that means allowed conditions validation rule should not fire, right? So you have to reverse it. So use the not above. No. First, first use and and then outside that put a not. Clear? Yes, sir. Ideally, it should work. 
there are special situation where in, in the range it is quite tricky check that out reverse conditions writing with nor is quite tricky so avoid this not operator very difficult to understand you all only will not be able to understand so use not uh, like use not try to use not as less as possible try to use uh, the conditions and then add, try to add those conditions with and or or as much as possible but use not only when it is absolutely required okay so that is all we had for validation rule any questions please keep practicing all the things if 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 you think that uh, your uh, Ease or conditions is is uh, you are uh, make like still not really conversant with. Don't go with ranges. Ranges are the most difficult things. So try to first go, do very easy easy uh, relation rules. Like first one range, ten to twenty. I want to block it. Yeah, practice it. Then try to uh, block two ranges. Right. And I have given many many text uh, text validation rules last day. So please try to do this. Very important. Okay, so today we'll start a new chapter, and that is called automation. What do we mean by automation? I will join from my machine. Give me one second. Tab. Give me one second. Share. Hello. Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so let me share my screen. Yeah, so what is, uh, what is uh, automation? We are talking about automation. Automation means doing some kind of a logic automatically, right? That means uh, you are basically uh, yes, you do something manually in the system. But uh, what you want to achieve is that uh, you do not need to require to do that manually again and again. Probably repetitive step. So you want to achieve this via automation. 
that means the system should automatically do, do this manual job for you. So if you see some kind of repetitive job, you it is always good to write a automation for it. And where is a system administrator uh, important? System administrator is important to write this kind of automations, automatic work. Like validation rule is a kind of automation, right? Validation rule is basically sanitizing your data, right? making sure that you only enter what is required, right? So similarly, automations important. You can write automations in Salesforce in many ways. Four, four things we will cover in our sessions. Uh, first is workflow. OK. The second is process builders. Third is flow. And fourth is approval processes. These four things we will cover in our admin trainings. There are other ways also. Then you can write code also. Code. Code is also the last option for writing any kind of automations. So I will. We will not discuss code at this at this point. We will only discuss the four default mechanism in which you can write automations, for which you don't have to write any programming. But logic, of course, logic is needed. Just like in validation rules, you have your logic to block. Similarly, all this will need a logic. So it is very important for you to practice the logics. The same logic which you are practicing for validation rule will be also applicable for these all things. Or approval process is deprecated. So do not create new approval uh, workflows. Process builder is also deprecated. That means you should not create new process builders. But it is important for you to understand how it works because many organizations are using workflows and process builders already existing are there. So it is very important to understand what is the logic written there. Otherwise, you cannot convert these to the modern way of doing it using flows. So flows and process builders are, are nowadays, if people are writing anything, they have to write using flows. and Many times there will be projects which will say that please convert my workflow to a flow, please convert my process builder to a flow. Okay, so flow is the way. So we will have a separate discussion on flows. But first, today we will try to see if we can cover the workflow and the process builder, right? But do not create, uh, but you can practice, of course, by creating a new workflow and process builder, but in actual project. If they will never ask you to create a workflow or process builder because either they, you have to make a change in an existing workflow or process builder. So it is important for you to understand this. Too. But flow is the modern way of doing it. And why you will come to understand because flow is far more powerful than workflow and process builders. OK. So let's now understand the basic differences. Approval process is a different ballgame, quite similar to workflow, but we'll discuss work, uh, uh, approval process a little later. So workflow, process builders, and flows. So workflow always fires after save. OK, process builder also fires after save. What is after save? That means after the value is saved in the database, OK? That means in the actual object, when the record is already saved, then these, these things fire. Flows can fire before or after. You can decide when to fire this. When to use which, we will discuss this later, yeah? In flows, you can fire a flow before saving the record and even after saving the record. It's not a either or. You can use both okay, for the same object. In workflow, you can create task. I will ask this question to you. So memorize this. Everything which I'm talking here, it is absolutely interview questions. 
so i can create task i can email uh, i can uh, update a field of the same record which is firing this workflow or any record which is my master parent of of a master data relationship okay that means i can update the record which is firing the workflow or i can also update the parent record only when it is a master detail parent lookup parent cannot be updated okay so create task email update field and is another thing called outbound message you don't have to understand what is outbound message outbound message is for passing a information from our salesforce to outside that means if there is another application maybe you have written it in java application wants to get some information then you will use outbound message we will not cover outbound message in our classes we will only cover these two create tasks you can do on your own same thing no difference process builder can do lot more process builder can create any record and update any record and do a lot more things you can see this in detail so whatever you can do with workflow you can all do in process builder and many more things flows everything you can do with workflow and process builder you can all do with flows okay it also allows you to schedule schedule means like something like runs every night once with all records okay so this is not allowed in process builder work clear so let's see this now you have to practice workflow process builders in great detail otherwise you will not get any job in salesforce okay your admin's first job is how good you write flows those are these these things flow workflow and these are very easy so validation rule workflow rule process builders and flows if you are not conversant you cannot write you will not get you will not never get a job in in salesforce okay so it is very vital for you to learn this all practice practice and practice okay so now i will stop presenting and i will start presenting from my laptop i will go to setup to write these automations and you will see there is a process if i search with this you will see there is a thing section called process automation and process automations is is the thing where you will get everything so you will get workflow rules process builders flows and approval process these are the four things which we discussed so we'll cover these all and these are very important for your admin certification as well as admin Uh, understand so first we'll start with workflow rules as i said workflow rules are rules which fire when you save a record so let's save a record see when you are creating it is saying that flow builder is the future low code automation you can use it to create most of the automation found in uh, workflow start using flows today right so always it is asking you to create flows but right now we are creating a workflow rule what workflow rule should i write i will i will my requirement is whenever a account is activated i want to add a message or i want to update my description field of the account description field so update description 
Octal rule can fire in three conditions situations. The first situation is every time a record is created, this will fire. Okay. Or every time it is created and every time it is edited. That means every time you hit the save button, it will fire. And third condition is it will fire when it is created. And any time it is edited to subsequently meet criteria. Meet criteria means this is the criteria down below. If I say active equals yes. So this is a criteria. I said that when account is active or set to active, I want uh, this workflow to fire, right? So when, so this is the criteria. So criteria when, so it will fire when the record is created. So if I create an account and if I, I, I give a criteria that the uh, account is not active will i will it continue with with the logic or it will not i create an account so i will see this okay say try it out save and next i think right now you are not in a position to understand so this is the action so when i have set the condition when the workflow rule will fire and there is a criteria on which it should fire and now these are the things you can do as i said you can create a new tax you can create an email you can uh, uh, set a workflow so let us first create a field update what we discussed right update description in Basically, uh, the workflow rule should not be written as update description. Uh, let us rename this one second. Ideally, you should write uh, something like, what is the actual situation? So if I say update description, uh, account activity. This is basically the name of the workflow right actually i am firing i am doing some things when the account is activated right when the account is set to okay so this workflow rule is not active okay right now you have to activate it later but so it will not work even if you make it okay now what will happen i went to the flow and now i e will start to add some action when this flow fires, something will happen. So what is happening? I want to update the description. So let's do that. Update description. Which field to update? Description field. How will I update? Description field type is C, long text area, right? So use a formula field. So formula editor. What will I create? I will say account is activated on let us insert a field which is not insert maybe get time field there is a there is a thing called now hmm i don't have an answer for that is yeah on buy and i will insert a field called account owner right or the user who is basically activating it right so so i will say that system dot uh, no sorry maybe this uh, profile or account owner okay. uh, where is the owner account owner will have a First name, last name. First name. I will have to add 
is using a equation because these are string values. And then finally, sir. Last time. So I am putting an information that the account is activated on this date time by this the first name, last name of that person. I let I will always do a check syntax. I think this needs a text, not sure. Date time. Yep, it is now working. So it was not allowing me uh, because if you see the now function, it will return a date time. So I have to convert this to a text field using a text operator, this test function. I will put a value and it will become a text. And then I can add all the text together. So you can put a quotation for any hard coded text. And if you can, if you otherwise you have to put a text here, the first one on first time, last time is already a text. So it's no problem. There should be a gap between first time and last time. So I will also add another space. That's all good. So I'm done. I will also activate it. So let's test it now. So I go to the account. If I now create a workflow test, my workflow will fire or not? No, sir. No, Why? sir. Why? Sir, active, you need to split that active. Criteria. So there is an active requirement. That is my criteria. Where is the active uh, active flag? So if you see this, here is the active flag. Active. It has to be set to yes. For now, let's save it. It's asking for serial number. I don't give anything. Account number. I have some validation rules. We have to set that. Some problem with this validation rule. We'll see this. I will go back and deactivate this. Okay. So let's try once again. Workflow. Yes. Just number. It saves. It should automatically update my de uh, description field, right? Nothing is updated. So now, if I create another account, workflow test two, and I set it. As no, will it fire or not? No, sir. No, sir. No, same same result, right? Yes. Then I will now set to yes, and I will see what happens. Now, if you see here, you see description is automatically filled. Here, you seeing there is a gap. There is a gap missing, so you can yes, fix it. Yeah, we can fix it. Wow. Account is activated on this by image balance. Now let us activate workflow one. Workflow one was not activated, right? The first one. This request. Yes. It did not have anything. Active. Now I will go and edit this. I will set this and make it yes. Will it find now? Yes, sir. Okay. You see? Updated. Correct. Yes. Now 
the question is look at this time very important huh? not this 6208 6208 okay what will happen if i edit again and save it will it fire no sir why it will not fire because uh, before save it, it meets the criteria why it is the same criteria activious Let's save it. Anything changes here? No changes. No. That means it did not fire, right? Yeah. Why it did not fire? This is where we discussed in the walkthrough room. But because sir, uh, edited. Yes. No, edited so fine, no, no. What is the condition? What did we apply? What is the condition did we apply? You see, created and any time created to subsequently meet criteria. Subsequently meet criteria means when you make any changes to this condition yeah, and then this becomes true, then only this will fire. Mm -hmm. So here the record was already active equal to yes. So you did not make any changes. So since you are not making any changes, it will not fire. But yeah. if I now set this to Inactive. no, no changes, 6, 2, 8, again edit it back. I set to yes. yes. You see, it changed now. 6, Six 8, 30. That means it fired. So whenever the condition is again meeting and again successful, and you are making any changes, then only it will fire. So how will I make sure that it fires every time? If I want to fire every time, the save button is clicked. What needs to be done? The second option, sir. Every time edit, edit and, and create it. Absolutely. Then. If I want this to fire every time, then I will use this one. Then it will not check. Uh, uh, not check that uh, the condition conditions fields has changed or not. The criteria will still be evaluated. Okay, this will not fire no, for uh, uh, the other no, thing. Like yeah, no, like that condition will still remain. So if you, I will show you that. So it is 6430, right? And now I am just not making any changes. I am saving it. 6536. Now it's changing, right? Every time I will hit this, it will change. See? 6544. Right now it is firing every time. But if I make it no, what is the value? 6544. 6544 remains. That means this time it did not fire. So criteria check will happen. But criteria check will not, uh, like, it, it will not be evaluated for firing. Yeah, got it? So criteria is important. Criteria is not going away. It will still fire when the criteria is equal to yes. But every time it is edited. But if you make this condition, in that case, it will check these fields were changed or not. If there was no change, then it will only fire once. After that, it will not, never not fire, right? Clear? So if you want to fire it, then you have to change those conditions again. Again, uh, meet the conditions, then it will again fire. Got it? So please remember yeah. that. Uh, so if you want something to happen only once, use this condition. If you want something to happen every time, uh, hey, same button is clicked then use this condition clear there is more things you can do in workflow play around with it second thing is that you can create a email so before that we'll just make a just small changes into this 
rule no that's not. edit here uh, uh, the gapping was not looking good so let us give some gap here we added a gap and then after first name and last name we have a gap after activated on let's let's have a gap let's see. right and if i now go and uh, edit it oh sorry see it's not looking so good all the gaps are all open, right so now we have logged or recorded automatically when a account got activated and by whom right all these things can be put together that's a good requirement now what we want to do is that we also need to send a mail I want to send the email also to the record owner that the account has got activated with this data. Right? Same thing. What I will do? I will go to first uh, create an email. So if for email creating email, we have to first create an email template. There are two things: classic email template, lighting email template. I will create a classic email. Template. You can create do the testing with lighting event template also. So it is a simple text. You can use HTML format also and make more complicated. And you can put images and stuff using that. So here, mail can be sent to you see any objects fields. So I will first available for use. It available for use. I will say account activated is a mail and the subject is a new account was a new account sorry not click on your account activated your Owned account hyphen. Now this will happen for any account, right? So what I can do, I can create a merge field. Merge field means a field which will be replaced when the value will actually go out. So I will this is the merge field name, right? You can create this. You can copy and paste. So every time this will be replaced with the actual account name. You your your own account is now activated is now so now activated details below what is the details i want to insert now the this field right what is the name description field it has everything right let's let's take that field account description right Good enough. I understand your own account account name is now activated. The same thing I have done here when in the subject line, the account name will be put first, then hardcore text activated. Please note here, we are not doing any kind of uh, like logic. That's why you don't need this code code, right? Don't use a code code here. If you are doing a logic evaluation, then you have to do, or you are using, using a plus sign, then you have to use this code code. Please note that. Here you don't need to do that. So now I have a account activated email template. Now let us go back to our workflow. Edit the actions. Another action I will now do. I will say the email alert. Send email. Which template to use, which I just created, account activated. I will send it to whom? I will send to account owner. Right? And save. That's it. Right? So let's go back to our testing environment. I will go to account. I will create a new account.
which is called uh, workflow email test and i will activate it description field is blank but i want to auto fill it when i saving it i am seeing account is activated this and if i go back to now my mailbox i will see that i have got a mail you see so that mail was not sent because i did not verify my email ah, this one no hold on Okay, so I will test on second. This time I will not do. Uh, let's create another. Oh. I have again activated the account. Now I will see my inbox. You see, workflow email test to activated. So the first part is the account which got activated, and you see what is you, you are seeing. Your own account workflow email test to is now activated. Details below. Clear? Yes. Play around with different functions, always a good idea. I will stop today because I think uh, it is a good background for you to test around and play around. I will not go to Process Builder today. Uh, let's close, go slow. So please practice validation rule and workflow rules. Whatever we showed in the, in the session today, please try to do it on your own. Sure. Yeah. I have. Any questions so far?